Hello there, prospective programmers. My name is Alexander Savchenkov, but you can call me Alex. Actually, don't do that because I'm not real. I'm just a recording on your computer, which you are streaming from the internet. So in case you don't want to land in an insane asylum, don't call me Alex. Don't say anything to your computer. Now, let's begin. All joking aside, this is a tutorial series on Java in Eclipse. Um, those of you who were directed towards this tutorial series from my first robotics competition Java programming tutorial series, which may or not may be up may may or may not be up yet, you could actually skip to this point in the video where we'll start actually writing programs. Since you guys kind of have a wonky uh, installation process, um, you could actually go to this website right here. This website right here to actually figure out how to install Java for real, for you guys, for your robots, okay? So one more thing, we will have a more advanced tutorial series, but for now we're just covering basic Java stuff, so installation, um, variables, printing, dealing with strings, stuff about Eclipse that might help you out, very simple stuff. So we have three links here, they're all going to be in the description, we're going to start right away okay so first of all you're going to want to download both java and eclipse you're going to click on that java right there in case you missed it that is the one on the left that doesn't come with netbeans since we're using eclipse not netbeans okay you're going to go to your java development kit u845 um it may be different for you guys it changes fairly often they update java in case you guys didn't know you're going to accept the license agreement and pick between whatever system you have. So if you have a 32-bit computer, you're going to pick Windows x86. If you have a 64-bit computer like I do, you're going to pick Windows x64. And you're going to click on that download link. I'm going to cancel it. You're not going to do that, obviously. I'm going to cancel it because I actually have these two over here. On the Eclipse side, you will go again to that link that I will post in the description. You're going to go again to your respective, um, respective computer um, architecture, 64 or 32 bit. I'm going to pick 64 again. You're going to select the um, mirror that it uh, actually recommends to you. Okay, I'm going to select the United States, X Mission Internet. It's going to start downloading. I'm going to cancel it again because, again, I have Eclipse right here in this zip file. And we're going to start right away. So, first thing you need is to actually run the Java installer. It takes a bit to do that. So, while we're running it, all you really have to do when you run it is just kind of keep clicking next. Okay. While we're doing that, we're also going to open up the Eclipse um, RAR file, zip file. Um, I'm using WinRAR, which I have not purchased, so it's going to complain to me. I'm going to drag this over. The nice thing about Eclipse is that there's no installation process other than moving the Eclipse folder to wherever you want to have it. Okay. Again, Java. Just kind of keep clicking next. You know, next. Just keep going. Um, both of these take a bit of time, so just let them happen. Okay. There's Eclipse. If you go into that folder while you're waiting for Java to complete, you'll see all of the Eclipse stuff here. This is actually the application. If you run that, that will start Eclipse. So we want to finish installing Java, obviously. So we don't want to do Java in a different folder. We want to click Next, and it's going to actually just install Java in the default folder again. Take some time to do. Be patient. Okay. Not going to run Eclipse again because we kind of need Java for Eclipse to work. Um, again, just being patient. There we go. Close that. It's done. Now we can get into Eclipse. So we are just going to run it like that. Don't always ask when opening this file. It is, after all, Eclipse, a um, fairly popular program. Okay, it's going to take a bit to uh, start up because this is actually a, um, the first time you're booting up, it's going to ask you for your workspace. And your workspace, for those of you who are not familiar with that, a lot of programs use these, but for those of you who have not used a program that uses a workspace, it has all of your um, basically settings, all of your code in it, all of your projects. Um, I'm going to make one in my desktop right now. What you would do is you actually probably put that in your documents, but for, e for ease of use, I'm just going to put in the desktop, um, make a new folder, call it tutorial 
workspace. Okay. Select that, press OK. You can check, use this as default and do not ask again. That will just make it easier for you to launch Eclipse because it's not because every time you launch Eclipse, it's going to give you this workspace launcher to ask you where you're working in. Okay, that will make it stop doing that and press OK. It's going to actually start booting up again. It takes a little while. I'm not sure why exactly. Um, might be because it's portable. Might just be that I just feel that it's longer. Okay, there's Eclipse. I'm going to close this folder, full screen this. Um, and there's Eclipse. You've got your Package Explorer on the left right here. That is actually where you will see your file structure of all your programs. In the middle is your code editor. There's no code here because we haven't made any. On the right, we have Task List and, list and Outline. These are useful sometimes. I never use them, so I actually normally just kind of get rid of them to get more room for code. Down here, it'll have all of your errors. And when you actually run a program, it'll also have the output of your program down here. So, without further ado, we're going to start. So we're going to go File, New, Java Project. We're going to call it whatever you want. Tutorial Project works just fine. This is going to say whatever version of Java you have. This tutorial is for Java 1.8, maybe 1.9 or 2.0 or 3.0 or 17.0 will actually be completely different. If that's the case, it's probably so far into the future that there is a new tutorial out anyways by somebody else, in which case you don't want to use this. Um, but right now, this is pretty modern because, well, at the moment that I'm recording this, because it's literally the latest thing, right, because it's current, we're going to have it set to 1.8 and just press finish. And bam, in your package explorer, you will have your project. Um, these JRE system libraries, this is just Java. Um, it lets you do Java stuff. SRC is where all of your actual code is going to go. So for that, you will actually you know, right click on SRC, go to new, and then package. A package is actually where all of your code goes. It's kind of like a folder for all of your code. Um, common naming convention for packages, pretty much ubiquitous now, is to get the name of your website or your company's website, except with the um, top level domain at the, fir at the front. So since I'm doing this in association with Team 696, FRC Team 696, I'm going to do org.team696.tutorial package. Okay, so you would go org or com or something like that, dot whatever your website name is, dot whatever your package is. And you can just get press finish. Okay, there we go, you have a package. And we're going to have to make one more thing Okay, bear with me. I'm going to go again, right click on that package now, new, and then you're going to pick class. So a class is your actual code. Again, you're going to name it something um, that makes sense. Generally, this is going to be your main code, so you want to name it, you know, something that, you know, says, that hey, this is the main code. You want to look in here. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to call it tutorial main. It doesn't have to be called anything main. Um, in robot projects, it's often called just robots.java. Um, here you want to select public, static, void, main, string, args. That's going to mean that it's going to add in the basic code that will make it possible for Eclipse to figure out that this is actually the main class with the main function. Okay, And there it is. It's going to have your code. Now I'm going to do a real quick thing. I'm going to change my font because I know you guys are probably watching this on half or quarter of a screen and following along on the right side. Um, if you guys actually want to do this follow along, it shouldn't take too long. Um, you probably don't want to do this because you're working on a regular screen, but it would be in Window, Preferences, General, where is it here, Appearance, Colors and Fonts, you would go into Java, Java Editor Text Font, and then Edit That, I'm going to set it to 14 point, that should be enough for you guys, um, oop, come on, we're going to apply that, there we go, now you guys can see this very well. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's all text-based. Yes, that's how Java works. Everything in a text-based language goes from top to bottom in order. Okay, jo Eclipse is nice enough to tell you which line everything is. So you may notice it says public class domain. That's just you know the main. That's just where your main class is. It defines where the beginning of it is with these curly brackets and where the end is with a curly bracket. If you click on one 
curly bracket, or, well, next to one, it'll actually show you with a little rectangle where the other one is. So you can figure out whether your curly brackets are in place. Um, functions work the same way. So this is where your actual, you know, legit, legit, this is what's actually going to happen code goes. Um, that is also works the same way. Curly brackets to open, curly brackets to close. Everything in here happens, and then it go, gets to the end, and it's like, okay, I'm done. Okay, so you may notice this thing that's in green. That is a comment. So that's the first thing. It's really nice. It's um, a way for you to explain how your code works. The way it works, you hit the slash twice, um, the one under the question mark. For those of you who don't know what forward and backslash are, probably you guys know because you guys are programmers now. But hit slash twice, and that'll let you type in stuff that isn't code, basically. So a lot of time, if you actually just write stuff out like, my main program, it will complain to you because it's like, hey, that's not code, but you can put two slashes before it, and then it'll basically be invisible to the compiler. So we're going to get rid of this comment. It's a silly comment. I don't like it. And we're going to leave that comment there. So first line of code, let's write it. The hello world, the classic hello world. In Java, it's a bit longer to do, um, but again, system. It's all, it's all worth it in the end. System dot out dot print line. Um, you may notice that it gives you this little, um, little light bulb that says enable intelligent code completion. What that actually does is it lets Eclipse kind of tell you like, hey, is this what you want to do? So say, say I was only like at the P. If you press control space right now, it'll actually tell you like, oh, do you want to print? Do you want to print F? Do you want to print LN? Do you want to print ln with a number in it? Do you want to print ln with you know something else in it? Um, I'm just going to type it out right now because it's just a bit faster for me. Put a semicolon at the end like you always do with uh, Java um, or C or C++. This will annoy you a lot if you're just starting. You'll forget semicolons. It'll be just, just like, oh, where's the semicolon? Where's the curly bracket? Don't worry, you'll get used to it. OK, there it is, semicolons in place. We are going to now put the actual thing in. So here we go. I'm going to say, hello world. So this works is you're going to put whatever string you want, whatever you want to say, inside of these little quotes, inside of these little parentheses. So if you want, to, if you want it to be a, a phrase or a sentence, it's got to be in quotation marks. That's the way it knows that it's a phrase or a sentence. Okay. And then if it's just if it's anything really, it goes inside of these little um, parentheses. Okay, so let's just press this play button, and it's going to ask us, you know, do you want to save it? I'm going to tell it to always save it so we have less buttons to push when we run our program a lot. We press OK, and bam, hello world! Congratulations, you've written your first line of Java code. Um, See me next time for variables and operators. Basically, how to do math and how to work with strings so that it's not just you know, printing strings. Okay, bye bye.